Italian and Japanese are totally the opposite. Hi guys, it's Rise. Today, I'll be talking about 8 differences between Japanese and Italian, both positive and negative ones. It's always hard to generalize because everything depends on person to person, but there are always some features common in many people in each country. This month, I went to Italy for two weeks to visit seven Italian friends, and during this intensive trip, I visited Milano, Venice, Ferrara, Bologna, Florence, Rome, and Sardinia, and mostly stayed at my friend's house, thankfully. That's why I got to interact with their family or their friends, at least 50 different Italian people, and I found so many interesting differences between Italian and Japanese. To be really honest, there are some very interesting similarities as well, which I'll talk about in the next video. In order to make sure that these video's contents are not totally off the point, I shared them with my Italian friends in advance, and they agreed with most of all of them. By the way, in this channel, I compare Japan with other countries in various aspects. If you are interested in Japan or how Japanese people think, this is the best channel for you. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and let's get started. Number 1. Friendship Italian people take care of their friends very well and are good at making new friends. Once you make an Italian friend, it's quite easy to make another friend because they are going to introduce you to another friends. I can give you tons of examples of this. One of them is that during this trip, thankfully, my Italian friends invited me to a lot of events like playing football, their friend's birthday party or their friend's graduation party and so on, where all the others are Italian. So it couldn't be really tough because I can't speak Italian very well. But I really felt I was part of the community because a lot of them tried their best to speak English. Just for me, that was incredible. But I'm not gonna lie, if you come to Japan, your Japanese friends would find it hard to invite you to Japanese-only community because they tend to be a little bit exclusive. I mean, even if you were Japanese, it would not be easy to jump into a new community in Japan. Compared to Japanese, Italians are a lot easier to be friends with. Number 2. Physical contact This is something we don't see in Japan. When Italians meet new people or see their friends, they naturally hug and kiss on cheeks, right? According to my Italian friends, that represents respect and acceptance. I believe this is one reason why Italians are very good at making new friends and get along with their friends very well. The question is, when the COVID was in the worst situation, how did they greet new people? Through video chat, right? My assumption is to hold a laptop and then kiss on the screen. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I'm wrong. By the way, in case you don't know how Japanese greet new people, in a formal situation, they bow this like so many times. In a casual situation with your friends, they're gonna do it like this. They wave their hands, keeping some social distance, even before COVID. That's why we are very good at keeping social distance. Number three, the pride of their country. Many Italians don't hesitate to say Italy is the best country and Italians are the best in the world. Of course, there are so many things that are great about Italy, but what's impressive is their confidence, their certainty, their trust of their country. That is actually very nice because when I visit their hometown, they were like, oh, I want to take you to this place and that place, or I want you to try this food, and I really appreciate it. I believe there are many things that are great about Japan as well, but it will be very unusual for Japanese people to openly say they are the best country or they are the best people because they try to be humble or they care more about the negative sides of Japan. Number four, work casually. In Italy, people work more casually than Japan. I feel like work and life are not totally separated in Italy, unlike Japan. Of course, it depends on your work, but what I saw in Italy was quite shocking to me. One of the many examples is that when I went to a famous gelart shop in Bologna with my Italian friend, there was a long queue. I mean, the, the long queue itself is totally fine, but the problem is, it was super slow. We were just wondering, why is it so slow? Because gelato is already prepared and what they are supposed to do is just ask the order, scoop some ice, and then pass it to the customer, right? It turned out that the employees are chatting all the time with customers or their colleagues, which was astonishing to me. 
I mean, Jelab itself was absolutely amazing. I'm so happy that they are enjoying the conversation. But still, if they had been efficient enough, it could have been three times faster, honestly. In Japan, keeping others wait itself is quite disrespectful. The employees try their best not to keep the customers waiting, and they sincerely apologize for 10 minutes wait. Number five, expressive. Their face expressions and gestures are quite artistic. They never hide emotion and express it as clearly as possible. My Italian friends told me that it's not difficult to tell if someone is Italian or not from their face expressions or gestures, which is very interesting. And it's really fun to see them showing their emotion, as long as they are positive. Sometimes in Italian restaurants, some employees show their rush and stress with their face expressions. I don't want to offend you, but in Japan, showing too much negative emotion might be seen as very childish. Even when restaurants are extremely busy, Japanese employees are not supposed to show their rush or negative emotion. And instead, they smile and they are more respectful to customers. I'm not talking about fancy restaurants or something. Even the cheapest restaurants in Japan, they're very respectful. In a way, you had better watch out when you, when you interact with Japanese friends because they might have negative emotion even if they are smiling. Number six, manas in public space. I'm sorry that I keep complaining about Italian people, but obviously I love Italian people. That's why I have a lot of Italian friends. But let me be honest, some people, not my friends, but some people are disrespectful to others. In public. Let me give you three examples. The first is manners on the public transportations. Some people play music and some people watch YouTube videos with maximum volume. I mean if you are watching this video right now on the public transportation with maximum volume, I really appreciate it. But otherwise, just bring your earphones. Also calling on the train is seen as a crazy act in Japan so you better watch out when you come to Japan and the second example is that I've seen a quite few couples too touchy in public initially I thought Italian people just don't care even if others are making out or something but it's actually not the case my Italian friends like they also say like they feel uncomfortable when couples are going too far in public space I mean for your information if you come to Japan holding your partner's hands might be the maximum thing you can do in public the third example is the worst one Speeding on the street. That is just disgustoso or disgusting. Please don't. Number seven, public transportation. I'm so sorry this is negative side as well, but public transportation in Italy are not ideal. Probably except Milan. The biggest problem is punctuality. Buses can be late for 30 minutes. The bus driver don't even apologize, which was initially very frustrating to me. As you may know, Japanese public transportation are very punctual. They apologize for even a few minutes late. In an extreme case, they apologize for 20 seconds earlier. That's why from a Japanese perspective, it was very interesting to see this on the train from Florence to Rome. They proudly say the train is on time. Jaloso, I mean, I knew it. I mean, they're supposed to be. They show off their punctuality when they are successfully on time. Congratulations. Number eight, how to name children. Many Italian people have the same names of their grandparents. According to my Italian friends, they're doing this to show some respect for their grandparents. That's a very nice culture. I met three Alessandros and three Filippos during this trip. I remember those names showed up as king's names in world history classes. But in Japan, there are always some trends in how to name their children. So famous Japanese people in history books have totally different names than our generations. In Japan, when parents name their children, they give a special meaning to the name. Japanese use Chinese characters, and each Chinese letter has some special meaning. Even if there are two Japanese people whose names sound exactly the same, their names might have different meanings. For example, one of the most common names for Japanese boys in our generation is Keita, but there are a hundred ways of writing it. We read both of these Keita, but the left one means full of happiness, and the right one means full of intelligence. Okay, so those are the eight differences between Italian and Japanese from my perspective. Again, everything depends on person to person. There are always some exceptions. So what I talked about today are just tendencies. I'd love to hear what you guys thought about these differences in the comment section. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And also on my Instagram, 
I share my life in Japan and abroad. So it might be worth looking at. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you soon.